Today we are telling you everything you need to know to purchase a push cart. Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Balangie. Thanks for checking us out once again. Today I have two push carts with me, the two that I own and occasionally use. I have a four wheel unit from Big Max, I have a three wheel unit from Max Fly, and we want to talk to you about all the features that you have to consider when you're looking at buying a push cart. So many jurisdictions right now are requiring golfers to walk the course or if they ride in a cart to be a single rider, which kind of takes away some of the convenience of it for a lot of people. So push carts have become a popular option. They're flying off of shelves. This is something that has become really great for the golf industry because more people are, are able to walk the golf course or required to walk the golf course. But if you haven't bought a cart in a while or you don't have a cart or you've never even considered buying a cart, there are a number of features that you need to look at including storage, wheels, base, uh, how you set it up, how you store it, all kinds of different stuff. And there's a variety of price ranges for these units, anywhere from maybe $150 to closer to $250 or $300 to $400. There's a lot to look at for these push carts. So we wanna take you through the different features of these push carts, things to consider before you purchase, and give you a great little buyer's guide before you go ahead and make that purchase. So let's go. So when we're looking at buying a push cart, we wanna look at several different factors to determine which push cart is best for us. Of course, first is budget. You're gonna look at a variety of different price points. And of course, right now, availability is certainly an issue. So if you need to get one now, uh, budget doesn't really matter quite as much. But if you're looking for a particular price range, you're probably gonna look in the 150 to $400 range, depending on the quality of unit that you're buying and depending on the features that it has and we should run down that checklist of things that you should look at to determine which of those push carts that you're looking at is best for you. So, so the first thing to look at is setup, ease of setup. Also storage. So those are two things that kind of work one in the same. But most golf carts, most push carts these days are relatively easy to set up. It's just a number of a few steps. Uh, it might take away a step here or a step there. So for example, my three wheel Max Fly, there are three steps basically. Uh, you have to unfurl the frame and then you have to set the third wheel unto itself, it runs independent of the other two. And then you use a telescoping handle to set up how you wanna hold the cart at what height you want to hold it. With my four wheel Big Max cart, it's a little bit different. I unfurl the frame and then I just do the telescoping handle to the height that I want, and we're done. Uh, that one step may mean something to you, it may not. For most people, it shouldn't. It's just a matter of setup. It's all relatively pretty easy these days. Both of the units, the three wheel and the four wheel, are pretty compact. Uh, they fit into very small frames so they can take up small spaces. So obviously for a lot of you, you're not storing your golf clubs at, or your golf cart at a, at a golf club in your locker room or in a club room. So you're gonna need to take it home with you. So these two units in particular uh, that are a little bit more compact, are gonna fit into your car easier, they're gonna fit into your house easier or your garage uh, where you keep your stuff maybe. So that may matter to you and it probably should matter to you right now, but push carts are so much better than they were even five or 10 years ago in terms of being compact and how they store. Because the two old push carts that I have in my home, you know, they're from the early 2000s and late 1990s, they don't store very compact at all. You have to kind of keep the wheels out as a base and then you kind of telescope the handle down, but it still takes up a lot of space. These fold up into very small packages now and it really works out nicely even if you don't have a whole lot of space to store it. So it's not gonna take up a whole lot of room, but that is something uh, in terms of wheel count, setup, and, and then uh, how it stores that, that does matter. We alluded to wheels a second ago. We, in this video, we're showing a, a three-wheel cart and a four-wheel cart. Uh, wheels do matter. It, it does matter in terms of how they handle and how they work. Uh, if you look at a three-wheel cart, think about a tricycle. Uh, if you have a child that has a tricycle, you ride a tricycle because it's easier to handle. That third wheel gives you a little bit more maneuverability uh, than you would with a two-wheel or a four-wheel because those wheels are in line with each other. So with a three-wheel cart, it's a little bit easier to drive the cart around the golf course. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to make twists and turns as you need uh, instead of just kind of walking in straight lines. The four-wheel cart is a little bit more stable, so it moves a little bit more easily. You get a little bit more ground coverage with the wheels, so the wheels are going to give you a little bit more operability. It's going to be a little easier to push, especially on a hilly course going uphill. Uh, downhill, obviously, they're going to work about the same. 
but the four wheel cart is a little bit more difficult to maneuver around easily. So you kind of have to move in jittered angles, so to speak. So when I want to move my four wheel cart, I kind of have to intentionally move it. I can't just kind of steer it. So that's just something to be aware of. It doesn't make it better or worse, but it is something to be aware of when you're deciding what you want to go with. We talked about wheels. Uh, we talked about having three and four, but you also want to know the shape and size of those wheels. You also want to know how they work as a function of a unit together. So in my four wheel cart, the, the Big Max cart, there are two smaller wheels in front and there are two bigger wheels in back. On the Max Fly cart, there are three wheels. The one in the front is a little bit smaller, but not quite as much smaller in terms of ratio as the two wheels on the Big Max compared to the two wheels in the back on the Max Fly. Most wheels these days are very lightweight. They're generally plastic. They are hollowed out except for the wheel itself and the, and the spokes, which means they're not very heavy and they're not gonna do a number on a golf course. They're not gonna add to the weight of the golf cart. It's not gonna make it more difficult for you to push it around. That's good news. So they do make some carts now that uh, kind of have the rubberized wheels. They're a little bit of a throwback. That doesn't make them any worse, but if you do have to keep wheels blown up, that is another consideration that you have to have to care about in terms of maintenance and, and how you use the cart. Then the next thing that we really want to look at is storage. Storage is really going to tell you everything that you need to know about most golf carts. It's going to be the decision point for most people. And the reason is you need to carry stuff in your cart when you play. Most people do it. That's why they get the cart. Uh, other than the ease of pushing it around, it gives them additional storage that they can use when they play golf. So storage can vary from device to device. It can vary from cart to cart, and that can matter based on price point and can just matter based on design. But one of the big things that you have to look at is how that storage is set up and how it looks when you've telescoped the handle out to the height that you want. So if you are a taller golfer, this is a conversation more for you than for someone who's shorter because if you're taller and you're using the telescoping handle to get it to a height that you like, you're going to need to telescope it higher, which means you're going to tilt the storage unit more upward like this. So if you have a storage unit that's like a net system, like in the Big Macs, that may push things forward a little bit. Now it's gonna stay in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's got a magnetic clasp lid. It works out just fine. But if you have something that you kind of want to keep still and you don't want to rustle around in there and you're a taller player, Having that net up like this is just naturally gonna make it move around a little bit more. But having that open storage will also allow you to keep your glove, maybe a distance measuring unit like a laser, your uh, scorecard if you want it, uh, maybe a couple golf balls, what, whatever you need to kind of just grab out of there, grab and go. That, that's a little bit easier with a net system and it's a little bit easier with a bigger drawer. The Maxfly cart has a smaller drawer. It still has one, it's just not as big and it closes with a plastic clasp, not a, a, a magnetic one. And it has a couple of spaces for golf balls. You can put two specific golf balls in there. I guess that's fine, but that's not really a selling point. And then both units have cup holders. Both units have drink storage. The one on the Maxfly unit is built in to the handle mechanism. So it's built in right next to where you store the, the open stuff that you wanna store in the container. And the downside of that is, again, if you're a taller golfer, if you're a regular height golfer, you know, 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 you don't have to telescope it up as much. So the drink just sits in there right here like normal, and it's fine. But if you're a taller golfer and you have to lift it up, now your drinks may tilt forward and you may get some spillage, which is really not ideal. The good news with the Big Macs is it has an on, a riding on cup holder. So it swivels as you walk. So you put a drink in there and it moves the way the cart moves. So that way you don't get spillage. You don't get as much of it, at least, unless you fill your cup up all the way. So and whether you're carrying a beer bottle, whether you're carrying a Coke bottle or a water bottle or whatever you're having, uh, if you have something with an open lid, you know, something that could spill out, then you probably wanna care about whether or not you have a cup holder that swivels on the side or you have one that's built in to the handle unit itself. If you're just carrying around a water bottle and it's closed all the time, that's really not a huge consideration. So long as it fits your, your cup of choice, you're, you're gonna be fine if it has a lid. We also talked about this uh, with, we need to talk about with wheels, which is a braking system. So you obviously have to stop the push cart a lot. Uh, that's a big piece of it. So there are basically two types of braking systems and you can imagine it's kind of like a bike in that regard. Most 
push cards have a braking system with, at the foot level. So they are connected directly to the wheel unit and you just push down or push up to break or release. And some have one that handles all of the wheels together and just stops the whole unit. And some have two. Some may have one for each of the, the wheels. So like the, on the Max Fly, there are two braking pads. There's one for the big left wheel and the one for the big right wheel. On the big Max unit, it's a little bit different. You've got uh, one brake. You just got one brake that handles all four wheels. So one of the big pieces of that is knowing have, whether you want to have those two on the three wheel unit or just one on the four wheel unit and some have one on the three wheel unit. There's a lot of different things there, but the, the different variations of foot brakes. And then you can look at having a handbrake. Now, Click Gear is, is one of the people that come to mind when I think about a handbrake system. So they have it integrated into the handle portion where you can just click it close like a bike grip. You just grab it and then it stops the whole system. You can lock it into place or you can release it with your hand and then just keep moving along with the round. So you don't even really have to do anything different other than walk with it. Um, I guess the, the thing to keep in mind with braking systems and the wheel systems combined together is how you're going to have to situate your cart when you have it at rest. So obviously for a lot of your round, you got it at rest. You got to hit shots, you got to prepare for shots, you've got to, especially around green complexes, you know, you're going to have it stationary. So making sure that you can break it quickly and easily and not have to worry about chasing it if it rolls away. That's, that's a big consideration. It's one of the conveniences of a good pool cart. So you have to know how to situate it, whether it's a three wheel or a four wheel with the braking system that you've got so that it doesn't go anywhere. So for example, with my Big Max carts, four wheels on downhill situations where I'm, or when I'm walking uphill, I need to stop to hit an uphill shot. I need to twist the cart facing it down so that the braking system catches and I don't have to worry about it unbraking or uh, the cart twisting around and then all of a sudden it's going down or it goes downhill or falls over. So I have to think about that each time that I'm using it. With uh, the three wheel cart, sometimes I have to put it on its side relative to the hill. So I have to kind of lay it across the hill and then hit my shot and then push it forward. So those are, are things to consider. Obviously the better units are going to have better balance and they're going to allow you to just kind of move more naturally. But, but sometimes that is a concern with pretty much every type of cart. And then of course, the kind of biggest part of all this is how it moves on the golf course for you. Everyone's a little bit different. Everyone plays a little bit different. Everyone's at a different height. Uh, some people spend more time in the rough than others. So you need to look at a golf cart and look at a push cart uh, as it relates to your game. So if you're trying to push on a relatively flat course, it doesn't really matter or the three wheels or four, uh, the braking system doesn't matter as much. But here where I play, which is a, a pretty hilly course, there's a lot of up and down at my club, the braking system matters, stability matters. So that's why I have a four wheel cart that I prefer to use. Uh, if you're someone who spends a lot of time in the short grass and you don't have to trudge through longer grass and you don't have to go through a lot of compact areas so maybe there aren't a lot of waste hazards on your course then you can probably worry less about the structure of the wheels there are less things to be concerned about but if you're on a golf course and you're not the best player and you have to spend a whole lot of time trudging through ups and downs and all over the place then maybe maneuverability matters more to you so maybe you need that three wheel cart so you have a lot of different choices available to you uh, as a golfer and again varying price ranges varying features but at this point, uh, there are a lot of stores that are sold out or have very minuscule options for you. So if you only have the choice between two or three or four things, price is going to be your number one consideration because that's going to be what fits your budget. Then two, I would look at the storage options because I think most of all, as a golfer, you want the convenience of being able to store as much stuff that you need to play golf. So look at storage. Then you probably want to look at ease of setup and storage of the entire unit because you want to be able to keep it in your car easily or you want to be able to leave it in your home someplace where it's not going to take a lot of room and cost you actual square footage in your house and then i think the last piece of it is just making sure that you have something that fits your height so the telescoping handles are going to fit pretty much every golfer but combining the telescoping handle with the storage that you need to get the right fit uh, that's going to give you all the all the checks that you need to put on a piece of paper if you're trying to buy a push cart. 
hopefully this has been a helpful review for you of all the features that are out there on push carts. They are tremendous now, and I hope a lot, for a lot of you who are looking into buying push carts that this is gonna be the start of something for you to get you more into walking uh, golf courses, make it more fun. I know a lot of people, particularly in my club, who love to ride. They just like to ride for the convenience of not having to walk with a bag on their back, 35 pounds, and they can put whatever they want in their bag and they can go. And they don't even think about push carts. Uh, and push carts have kind of gotten a stigma over the years as something that people who are physically weak or feeble or whatever use, and, th and that's really not the case. They offer tremendous convenience. They still allow you to walk the golf course. They still allow you to enjoy the game the way that it was originally meant to be played. And it gives you a chance for some great exercise too. I know a lot of people use carts because they physically have to, uh, and that's absolutely fine. I have no problem with that at all. But if you're capable and you want good exercise and you still want to be able to, to enjoy the game, especially in a lot of jurisdictions where you're going to be required to walk or you're going to only be able to be a single, single rider in a cart, a push cart is a worthwhile investment, whether it's just for a few months or whether it's something that you're going to buy moving forward. So if you're in the market and you just get a starter cart and you love it, then you can step up with your next purchase to an even big, better cart. And if you're going to go all in now, then look at the great carts that are available from a variety of brands. You're going to find one that fits your game and it's going to be a great complement to your enjoyment of the sport for years to come. I'm Ryan Balanchy. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.